shifting, are changing profoundly. The key issue that we are going to focus throughout the day today is the energy investments. Avrupa'nın ve Asya'nın tam ortasındaki bulunan bir ülke olarak da bu değişimleri olumlu manada, pozitif manada sürdürmeye devam edecek. Excellencies, Ambassadors, Council Generals, high-level representatives from the energy industry, distinguished colleagues, and dear participants. We would like to welcome you all to the ICAC 6th International Energy Forum on the road to Antalya G20 Summit, Global Energy Security, today and tomorrow. We will have two panels today, the first one being the energy security expectations of governments from G20, and the panel number two will be expectations of business from B20. Um, we shortly revised the forum program due to general elections that will be held at the beginning of June, as Mrs. Kular Sabanji will mention in her speech in a few minutes. And uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Ms. Kular Sabanji to the lectern. Good morning, Minister Aransky, Minister Palacio, State uh, Secretary Dr. Steinman, Ambassadors, Consul Generals, High-Level Representatives, Distinguished Colleagues, and dear participants. Before starting to my speech, I would like to share with you the uh, notes uh, that the Prime Minister Davutoglu and Minister Yildiz sent their best wishes to us. They tried until the last minute, but it is only three weeks from the elections, and they couldn't change their uh, route, uh, so they are not able to be with us today. This is the sixth forum. They have always been with us. They have always supported us, especially Minister Taner has always been with us. So I think for this year, uh, we will send our messages after the discussion. I'm sure they will follow us. Uh, and they both are campaigning in different regions of Turkey, so they were not able to attend today. Uh, this uh, high-level government industry academia forum organized by the Sabancı University, it's International Center for Energy and Climate, in short, we all call it ICAC, as you all know, is a unique event, uh, and I'm very proud and very pleased to see the attendance today in the energy sector in Turkey and in the region as a whole. In the past six years, ICAC has proved it herself as a key platform for intellectual leadership in the region, for the exchange of ideas and perspectives related to very important energy and climate topics. And this year provided ICAC by the sixth year has attracted even more significant interest from the national and international authorities as we speak uh, for the decision makers addressing energy and climate challenges, which 2015 is an opportunity, opportunity for the world to really address these issues. Uh, ICAC's role as a globally recognized center uh, in Istanbul, where Global Energy Connects is, a grow is growing as a distinguished platform for exchanging ideas for a better energy future, as we call. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Minister Aratsky and his delegation from Hungary, Minister Palacio from Spain, State Secretary for Energy, 
Dr. Steinmann from Switzerland, special advisor of the Prime Minister of Japan, Mr. Hasegawa, energy counselor of the secretary, Ms. Melanie Kanderlein from the United States Department of Energy, ambassador of Ukraine to Turkey, Dr. Korotsky. And I would like to thank very much to uh, IAI chief economist, Dr. Fatih Birol, under his leadership, uh, we are, uh, and he's also, as you know, the honorary chairman of ICAC. Mr. Birol has, as you all know, has been elected to the position of executive director of the International Energy Agency with unanimous vote of all the 29 member countries and will be starting as the executive director on the 1st of September. We again congratulate him uh, on his new post. I strongly, yes. I strongly believe that after September 1st, the International Energy Agency, under the leadership of Dr. Birol, will significantly contribute to empower strategies for a more secure, reliable, efficient, sustainable, and competitive energy future for the globe. I would like to also thank to all ambassadors, consul generals, government officials, invited speakers, and industry executives for joining us today and sharing their views on key energy topics such as energy security, economic development, competitiveness, and environmental awareness. ICAC is a community with co-chairs, members, and associates. Thanks to all of you, and thanks to all the support that you are giving to us. A community that has grown with the participation of very significant energy players, regional and global. I would like to thank again, for first of all, the IK co-chairs Alstom and Energisa, and, but of course, to all the members of the ICAC. And if I may, I would like to again name them. Ak Energy, Giner Group, Eren Holding, Gener Energy, General Electric, Shell, Siemens, and Zorlu Energy Group. I believe today's discussions will make a valuable contribution to the strategies and the efforts of the policymakers, investment community, and researchers in the field of energy. I'm very much confident that ICAC's role as the polar star will continuously enhance by ICAC's enlarging network and intellectual leadership. Within this context, ICAC has prepared her first report. Yes, first report of ICAC addressing energy imports of Turkey. Turkey is a net importer of energy, as you all know. Due to Turkey's limited domestic energy resources, compared to the growing energy demand, imports play a substantial role in the primary energy supply of Turkey. I think this report is a timely assessment of the energy balance of Turkey towards 2023. As energy imports are an important contributor to total import account of Turkey, and consequently the, to the current account deficit, of course. I would like to highlight very briefly the key findings and the recommendations of the report, which will be out uh, soon, which is, I think, are the important uh, for the Turkish government and Turkish energy industry and all other national and international stakeholders who have an interest in the ever-growing Turkish energy markets. Although the recent drop in energy prices seem to ease the energy import burden, this situation, as we all know, considered as temporary. It is expected that the prices will not stay in today's levels. When the energy prices rise, the energy import bill would also rise significantly, and hence the problem could grow substantially if the necessary structural precautions are not taken in time. 
and at the same time, growing import dependency means increasing risks for the Turkish energy security. Energy import bill of Turkey might double until 2023 in the business as usual scenarios. That's why this era of low oil prices should be seen as an era of opportunity to decrease the Turkey's energy import dependency and for the structural precautions to be taken. Turkey's strategic geopolitical location, bridging hydrocarbon resources and demand centers offer wide opportunities where Turkey can realize the position of being a terminal in the region, a regional energy hub. Local and renewable energy resources can be utilized to a greater extent supported by competitive energy markets and effective research and development strategies and implementations. In these efforts, all the sustainability measures should be considered. Energy efficiency along the energy supply demand chain has a strong potential to elevate energy imports in a cost-effective manner. New businesses, models, and solutions need to be developed around the new energy concepts such as demand-side management, distributed energy generation, and smart systems. Last but not the least, efforts to establish liberalized electricity and natural gas markets are vital and needed to be enhanced for enabling a more efficient energy system. I believe that this report will provide an important base for energy strategies and future studies in the order to develop options for improving the energy balance of Turkey. And I'm hoping that with the new government, this report will be a good guideline for the new government. Our aim as ICAC is to bring universities, industry, and the public sector together on a platform and suggest policy recommendations. ICAC will continue to contribute to energy and climate-related topics with future research studies. I also would like to inform you that an interdisciplinary, some of you know and follow very closely, that, in, uh, uh, that an interdisciplinary graduate program, energy technologies and management, have started in Sabancı University with ICAC Sport. There is a remarkable interest in the groundbreaking master's program for this program in Turkey. So I wanted to announce again. A few months ago, US Secretary of Energy Ernst Muns uh, who is a friend from MIT, met with the master's students for our graduate program and gave us give a speech on the energy security and climate change. The program is being enhanced with guests, lecturers from MIT and other universities with which we, Sabancı University, cooperates. The global energy system continues to pose very diverse challenges and opportunities, as we all know. In this dynamic energy landscape, one topic remains always at the top of the energy policy agenda, energy security. The uninterrupted availability of energy sources at an affordable price. This is why we name this year's forum as On the Road to Antalya G20 Summit, Global Energy Security Today and Tomorrow. Energy security has many aspects, as we all know. Long-term energy security largely deals with timely investments to supply energy in line with economic developments and environmental needs. On the other hand, short-term energy security focuses on the ability of the energy system to react promptly to the sudden changes in the supply-demand balance. In this context, energy security has multiple dimensions and requires effective strategies in different areas 
from geopolitics to energy investments and from energy networks to emerging responses, emergency responses. Dr. Fatih Birol will be elaborating on this significant issue right after me. This year, we'll witness very critical meeting for our planet. As I said in the beginning, 2015 is critical for our planet. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change will convene in Paris to render an agreement that will define the future of efforts in climate change mitigation adaptation. Climate change is a global threat and has no borders, therefore it requires global solutions. Two-thirds of the industrialized countries covering nearly 80% of the greenhouse gas emissions from the industrialized part of the world have already set out their ambition for the new agreement. This is the good news. According to United Nations, climate uh, science is clear that Paris needs to set the world on track to a three-part objective. If we are to meet the two degree centigrade goal, which may not be easy, a global peaking of emissions in the next decade, a deep decarbonization of the economy worldwide, and climate naturally in the second half of the century at the latest. The conference in Paris will be critical to determine the future of the world for new generations. This year also, the G20 and B20 summits will be realized under the presidency of the Turkish government in Antalya in November, which gives an additional responsibility to us. These summits will take place right before the Paris Climate Conference. As you know, energy is one of the G20 priorities within the sustainability team along with development and climate change finance. Today, there are over 1.3 billion people without access to reliable energy. In order to address this global problem, the issue of access to energy for all and energy investments are the central topics in the energy agenda of G20. G20 will also elaborate energy efficiency, market transparency, renewable energy, and inefficient fossil fuel subsidies. The B20, B20 will hold a conference on the energy and climate change for discussing the increasing energy needs of emerging markets and engaging in a productive debate on the balance between economic efficiency and pollu pollution growth, population growth. The conference is aimed to foster discussions around unstable energy prices innovative solutions in renewable energy resources, and trade policies that are environmentally friendly. The B20 community will reflect on the history of energy practices and will make recommendations towards a more sustainable energy trade. Being the co-chair of the B20 Trade Task Force, I'm highly enthusiastic that the G20 and B20 summits will provide effective solutions to the global energy challenges. We're all working in that direction and hope that this time will make a difference on the implementation. We are pleased and honored to have you all this year at ICAC's sixth International Energy Forum. And we look forward to seeing you again next year at ICAC's seventh International Energy Forum. Thank you for being here and thank you for all your contributions.